This is the brand new Laguna PX12 Quad Tech Benchtop Planer with Carbide Inserts. It was recently released in 2021. I'll be discussing my initial impressions and see how it compares to my current planer. Normally it retails for $699, but I actually got it on sale during Woodcraft's 2021 Black Friday sale for $539, which is almost 25% off. Woodcraft even had a box specially labeled for this event. Luckily I had one nearby so I didn't have to pay for shipping. I'm replacing my old reliable Ryobi AP1301 planer that has served me well for well over a decade. I'm just a hobbyist woodworker, but the fact that it's still working like a champ has really surprised me. I've gone through multiple blade changes and it just keeps on working. Ryobi has a newer model these days, so for funsies, let's try to estimate how much it would cost. Alright, let's use this online inflation calculator and plug in a few things. I got it back in 2008 and it's uh, 2021. Uh, I got it for $200. Actually, it's 180 since I used a 10% off coupon. Um, it's calculated here. Right, it should be about a 29% increase and should be about $257. Alright, let's check out the Hold Depot website to see how much it costs. Uh, oh, it's green paint, so it probably costs a little bit more. Um, so let's see. Oh. Oh. That's a lot more. Back to my current planer. Honestly, the Ryobi is still working fine, so there's really no great reason to replace it. I just want to see if I can address some of those issues it has, so let's dive into those now. For one, it only has two sets of knives, which means the cut quality can be a bit lacking and wears away faster than, say, a three-bladed model like the DeWalt. I would also get occasional chips in the blade, which leaves these really annoying grooves in the wood. Some of the planers these days allow you to ship the blades left and right to cancel them out, but I can't do that with mine. I do have the option to flip the blades over for a fresh edge, but that doesn't stay nick-free for very long since they're only made from high-speed steel. The replacement blades are about $20, but they do add up. They do come off very easily with a card scraper, but it would be nice not to do that anymore. It interferes with the glue-ups if you don't remove them. It also snipes really badly. You can barely see it here on a piece of poplar even after I shaded the area with a pencil, but here it is. You can definitely feel it still. It's about two and a quarter inches long, which means I might need to chop off the front and back depending on the project. Here you can see it even clearer from the side with a straight edge over it. According to my measurements, the snipe is approximately 5 thousandths of an inch, which is exactly what fine woodworking measured for this model back in 2007. It was one of the worst in their tests. The Laguna supposedly has a locking mechanism that reduces the snipe, so I'll test that out and compare it. If you look carefully at the Ryobi that doesn't feature a locking mechanism, you could actually see the entire cutter head shifting up and down as the wood enters and exits the planer. This movement is what causes snipe at the front and back where the wood is only supported under one roller at a time. Even thickness is achieved when the wood is pressed down by both rollers at the same time. Setting up the planer out of the box didn't take too long. I only had to attach the handle and screw in the dust collector port. The port is on the left side facing the front which is actually opposite of my current planer. It also comes with two Torx wrenches, one for removing the cover to access the cutters and one for removing the carbide inserts themselves. It also comes with an adapter port if you have a 2.5 inch dust collector hose. And uh, that's all it came with. Mine didn't even come with a manual, which was uh, probably a mistake. I honestly couldn't find it anywhere. I also had to set up the in-feed and out-feed tables using these screws at the bottom. It was a bit finicky to set up, but I finally got it working. I found out you can't get them perfectly cool planer with the main bed, but the manual says it shouldn't be a problem. I mean, the critical thing is that it doesn't get jammed when exiting the planer and that the wood is supported on the far ends. After setting up the dust port, I also realized I couldn't flip up the outfeed bed anymore, so that will have to stay down all the time. The infeed goes up just fine, obviously. This is Laguna's Quad Tech Cutter, which is the main reason I bought it. It has 26 carbide cutters, consisting of 2 rows of 7 and 2 rows of 6. Laguna advertises them to be extremely durable compared to high-speed steel knives. I've heard numbers up to 10 times more durable. They can also be rotated up to 4 times to get a fresh edge every time, so they should last a really long time. They are self-indexing with this back ridge, so it's pretty easy to align them perfectly. Each one overlaps ever so slightly, but that's about it. In fact, only one carbide cutter out of the four rows strikes the wood during each revolution. If you follow the arrow as I rotate the cutter head here, only one cutter will intercept it during each revolution. This is actually worse than my Ryobi, which has two knives per revolution. Maybe the quality of the carbide edge overcomes this downside, but it's something to keep in mind. Laguna prices 10 of them at $70, or $7 a piece. That means you'll need to buy a pack of three at $210 to replace all the blades, which already cost more than my Ryobi. And yes, you'll have four leftover pieces because you can't buy exactly 26, which is kind of frustrating. This is actually over twice the price of other name brand cutters, which are about $35 for the same amount. In other words, Laguna cutters are extremely expensive. 
Fortunately, I measured them to be exactly 15 millimeters square and two and a half millimeters thick. After some quick searching on Amazon, it might be possible to use these third-party cutters for much cheaper, somewhere between 20 and 25 dollars for a pack of 10. They seem to match the dimensions used by replaceable carbide cutters and lathe tools. I haven't confirmed that these will fit, so please let me know if you've tried them. Keep in mind that this quad tech design is very different compared to the much superior helix or spiral cutters that you often see. The bird Helix and Lux Cut are the more popular companies that make it. They feature many more cutters with plenty of overlapping cuts between rotations. Certain models also hit the wood at a slight sheer angle, supposedly creating an even cleaner cut with less tear out in figured woods. Their cutters have a slight radius, which is different than my PX12, which has perfectly square cutters that strike the wood at a perfectly square angle. The Helix cutters are much more complex to manufacture and come with twice as many cutters, which means they're much more expensive. By simplifying the design, Laguna was able to sell the PX12 at a much cheaper price point. Now that it's all set up, time to start planting some wood. This is actually my first time using the Laguna here, and unfortunately it wasn't as impressive as I expected. I was left with this giant groove in the wood which meant there had to be a nick in one of the carbide blades, and the plain surface also had these really weird fine lines. That was disappointing considering it was completely brand new at the time and the surface is not as good as my Ryobi. Upon closer inspection, sure enough, one of them was chipped really badly. It was either a defect or it was damaged at the factory, I'm not really sure. I inspected all of them to be sure, and there was another one with a really bad corner chip. Quality control just seems to be a bit lacking in this Laguna product. I contacted them to get it resolved and see what they had to say. To their credit, they did respond right away after a couple hours, basically saying that my planer is in the process of being recalled due to issues lying in a cutter head. I'm not sure what damaged cutter has anything to do with it, but they said to return it to Woodcraft for a full refund, but that's going to be an added inconvenience for me. And just after an hour and a half after I read that, Laguna blasted out this email to all the owners of the planer model, asking if they have any issues themselves, particularly planing fine lines, which is what I was seeing. I'm guessing that the cutter head just wasn't machined properly, and each carbide cutter isn't aligned perfectly with the next one over. Regardless, let's proceed with a bunch of tests. I just changed the blades in my Ryobi relatively recently, so it should be a pretty fair matchup. First, let's take a closer look at the surface it leaves behind, even though the PX12 cutter head itself is flawed, according to Laguna. Setting aside the fine lines and ridges left from the damaged carbide, maybe we can learn a few things. For the first sample, I used a simple piece of poplar. Visually, they look pretty similar with no noticeable difference and no tear out, but upon touching them, the Laguna felt a bit fuzzier, which might explain why it appears slightly darker in these shots. The carbides might have a bit of trouble when planing a softer wood like poplar. I'll give the straight knives a win here. Next, I brought out a chunk of curly maple, and there was definitely a difference here. The Laguna clearly looked and felt smoother, where you can see an almost glossy sheen compared to the Ryobi. Further down the board, there were some grain reversals where the Ryobi had some trouble, but the Laguna was practically flawless. I circled them and penciled to make it easier to see. Here's a close-up where the worst spot was and where the tear-out was non-existent in the Laguna. For the final sample, I used a pine 2x4 that had two pretty bad knots in it. In my opinion, the Laguna was also the winner here with clearly less tear-out, though it's not perfect either. In all fairness, this board was the toughest, with it being a pretty soft wood with knots that always have gnarly grain directions. On the general surface itself, it was also much better than the Laguna, which was flawless compared to the Ryobi, which clearly had some imperfections in it. Let's compare noise levels by placing a microphone 30 inches away. I left my dust collector off to isolate the planar noise itself, so that's why there are chips flying everywhere. Now first to Ryobi. It was around 94 decibels running by itself, but as you can hear, it becomes ear-splitting when you run a piece of hardwood through, and when that happens, it reaches 111 decibels, which is the same level as a jackhammer rock concert, and it would be even louder with my dust collector on. Now the Laguna. It is actually the same loudness as my Ryobi when turned on, but didn't get that much louder when actually cutting the wood. My guess is that the beefy individual carbide blades creates overall less resistance due to the less cuts per revolution as we saw earlier. That results in owning an increase of 2 decibels in overall quieter planing operations which my neighbors should appreciate. Let's test out dust collection using a simple 2i4. For the Ryobi, notice that the dust hose is on the right side. It does pretty well when running wood toward that side, but as you'll notice, it gets progressively worse as I move to the left. Even planting dead center creates a bit of a mess with chips getting spit out on the left side of the wood. 
When I plane the wood furthest away from the hose, ships are flying absolutely everywhere to the point I might as well just have the dust collector off. I'm constantly sweeping up piles of wood chips off the floor. Let's see how the Laguna performs. Here the dust hose is actually opposite on the left side. Even planing furthest away on the right leaves very little chips on the infeed table, aside from a little burst of wood chips as it exits. And there's almost no noticeable difference no matter where I send the wood through, either on the left or right side. I'm actually really impressed, so there should be very little cleanup from now on. As you can see here, there's also an internal impeller that helps direct the wood chips as they enter the dust chute and driven into the dust hose. That's something that the Ryobi does not have. I also noticed that the wood chips in both planers look very different. The straight long knives leave very long chunky chips which might explain why my dust collector has trouble sucking them in, but the chips from the Laguna can only be as long as the carbide inserts themselves which result in smaller chips which are also easier to suck up and won't clog your hose. There are two different species of wood here which is why they're not the same color but the result is the same either way. Like I mentioned earlier, the snipe on the Ryobi is pretty bad. At the rear of the wood, the snipe is around four to five thousandths of an inch, which is pretty noticeable here. Measuring the front of the board doesn't fare much better, at roughly about the same amount of snipe. It's a bit harder to see for some reason, but the snipe is definitely still there. I won't get into the specifics of what snipe is and what causes it, but Laguna advertises this locking mechanism to reduce the amount of snipe you get. When engaged, the spring-loaded bar presses on all four metal posts, which essentially stops the entire cutter head from deflecting upward when a piece of wood enters and exits the planer. This mechanism has to be completely rigid to get any noticeable effect, especially considering the amount of force that's pressing on the rollers themselves. Keep in mind you can't raise or lower the cutter head when it's engaged, and you could actually damage it if you try to force it, so don't forget to disengage it when you need to. Realistically, this is not a problem because you only need to engage it during your last pass. First, let's see how much it snipes with the lock disengaged on the same piece of 2x4. Surprisingly, it's actually worse than the Ryobi at 6 to 7 thousandths of an inch. It's pretty much the same at both the back and front of this piece of wood. I guess I shouldn't knock it too badly for that since it's advertised to actually use this locking mechanism to reduce snipe, so let's see the difference when I actually engage the lock. And what I discovered is that the snipe was reduced quite a bit. The rear head snipe at only two thousandths of an inch, which was actually pretty difficult to see visually where it was here. Moving to the front, that snipe at a little bit more at around three thousandths of an inch. It's easier to see where it is here, but it still snipes at just half as much as my Roby. Not eliminated, but definitely reduced. I measured snipe on a piece of hardwood to see if wood species mattered, but the snipe was just as little in the rear, though the front was a bit more at four thousandths of an inch in this particular test. So to get a bigger sample size, I repeated these measurements several more times, but it was pretty consistent no matter which wood I used. Bottom line is that it snipes very little in the rear, but always a lot more in the front. Maybe the locking mechanism doesn't have as tight of a grip on the post in the front of the machine. And as a quick note, the length of snipe is 2 and 1 eighths of an inch, which is only a bit less than my Ryobi, so that's negligible. Next, I wanted to see how parallel the cutter head is to the bed by measuring a thickness on the left and right side of a plain piece of wood. The widest board I have right now is a 7.5 inch piece of poplar, so that's what I used. For the Ryobi, I was pleasantly surprised to measure only a deviation of one thousandths of an inch over the entire width of the board, even after all these years of use. That results in less than two thousandths of an inch difference if I had a piece of wood the entire width of the bed, which was thirteen inches. For the Laguna, I was actually really disappointed to see that I measured a deviation of five thousandths of an inch where it's cutting deeper on the left side. This is five times worse than the Ryobi. If it had a twelve and a half inch wide board, which by the way is half an inch smaller than the Ryobi, the deviation would be even worse at over eight thousandths of an inch. I can't comment on how this practically affects my woodworking overall, but this definitely would require more sanding and clamping pressure in the future. This might actually be a result of the manufacturing defect in the cutter head, so it could potentially be fixed in the future. So that's it, at least until they fix all their manufacturing issues. But I won't hold my breath because there doesn't seem to be a timeline for that. I've been reading online that other people have been experiencing the same issue, so I'm definitely not the only one. Honestly, the resulting plane surface is quite manageable with some simple sanding, and in some cases the fine lines are not even noticeable depending on the color of the wood. But Lacuna told me to return it, even though my original question was about damaged cutters, so I'm not about to keep a supposedly broken product. I'm also hoping they allow me to get a fixed version in the future for the same $539 I paid originally. I mean, that's the only reason I bought it in the first place, which was an advertised sale from Laguna themselves and not specific to Woodcraft. I mean, that would be pretty crummy if I had to pay more money later after a recall that they're responsible for. I still plan on getting a fixed version in the future because it still looks like a promising product. I'll do a quick follow-up when that happens to see if smooth of a surface it's actually supposed to leave behind. So, that's it for now, and thanks for watching.